You are listening to the New Vision Church Podcast, a community to belong, be loved, and believe. Well, uh, it's good to see you all this morning, and uh, we are wrapping up a series today that we've been in for a while. Some of you may have been wondering when it was going to end, and today is the day. Um, we, we started this series to be continued. We didn't know how long it was going to continue, but it's over today. Uh, and I say that kind of in jest because, you know, sometimes um, for those of us who are pastors and speakers, you know, we, can, we, we try to plan things out. And sometimes, you know, you, you just can't plan everything. Uh, and, and sometimes it's good to allow God to have that freedom to move and work. Amen? Uh, and as we wrap today up, I wanted to wrap today up talking to you about hope. Can anybody use a little hope? Right? I think so. Um, hope is something that we could all use. It's something that benefits us all, but it's, it's really powerful. When it comes down to it, there's no real reason to live if you don't have any hope. Right? The only reason we get up every morning is we hope for something. We're, we're working towards something. We want to see something happen. But we've all got different ways of looking at hope. A Christian has a particular slant about hope, and, and I think that, you know, it's, it's somewhat different than a, a, a regular person, a non-believer, non-Christian. Uh, for the Christian, hope is more than just a dream or desire. You know, when you talk about people and what their hopes are for the future, you know, it's like, well, I really hope, you know, this happens. It's kind of like I want this dream to come true or I have a desire for something. But for a Christian, it's, it's quite different. A Christian, when we talk about hope, uh, it's really more of a certainty or a confidence that comes from a certainty. Right? When we say hope, we're not just saying, oh, well, I hope Jesus is coming back. Not, look, he's coming back. All you got to do is look around and you can see that the Bible is being fulfilled right before your very eyes. He's coming back. That's a certainty. I don't just say, oh, I hope he's coming. No, he's coming back. You see, it's a certainty that I have, and so I say, I hope he's returning today. Anybody ready for today? <laughs> right? Let me get in some rapture practice, all right? Let me, all right? All right? So, see, the thing is this, is that Jesus is coming back, and so we say, I hope for that, but it's not, it's just, it's not just something that I'm, I'm wishful thinking Okay, uh, or wishful praying, right? No, I know that this is going to happen. So hope is confidence that brings assurance. Hope is confidence that brings assurance. Anybody need some assurance today? You know, sometimes we need to be reassured of some things. And this is one of the reasons I want to wrap up this series talking about hope because, you know, sometimes when, th when things are just continuing on and you feel like, is it ever going to end? Right? It just keeps going on and on and on and on and on and on. And you just think, is it ever going to end? Well, it is going to end one day. And we can have some assurance that where we are and what's continuing on right now is not always going to continue on the way that it is. Praise God for that. Right? And so hope isn't insurance that something bad won't happen. You know, a lot of times we have these hopes that nothing bad's going to happen. It's not, it's not insurance that something bad's not going to happen. It's actually assurance that something good or something better is on the other side of whatever's going on right now. Anybody got some hope for some good stuff after this? <laughs> right? Anybody got some, some assurance that, you know, it's, it is going to get better? Right? And, and so we have this option in our lives. We can either get better or bitter. And there are a lot of people that things have been going on for a while. You know, when things go on for a while, you kind of get tired of it, don't you? You're just like, man, you know, I'm so over this. I was over this five minutes ago. Right? I was over you five minutes ago. Right? That's, that's how some people feel, right? It's like, dude, you don't even got to look. Just zip. And they just keep going on and on and on and on and on, you know, and you just hold uh-huh, right, yeah. Uh -huh. right. It, it just never ends. And, and you just think, you know, it's got, is it going to get better? A lot of times when life is hard, people get bitter and they don't get better. And for as a Christian, right, we, sometimes we fall into this fallacy of thinking that as a Christ follower, life's going to get easier or should be better now. Right? Uh, God's not answering my prayers. 
So, so maybe I sinned. Maybe you didn't sin. Maybe God's just waiting. Amen. And sometimes, you know, we don't like waiting, do we? We don't like waiting. I, you know, you guys uh, have all probably seen this happen, especially if you have an iPhone, right? iPhone, 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 get an iPhone. Uh, if you have an iPhone, right, you, you, you see these little, right, when somebody, you're in a conversation and they're, they're trying to talk to you and you get the little bubbles, right, and the, and the dots get going. And I'm just like, I see those dots and I'm like, all right, I know you ain't thinking that long. Come on, just respond, Right? Just type something back. Just give me the thumbs up, whatever, you know. But the little bubbles are going, and it's like, my goodness. And it takes like, you know, 30 seconds, a minute, and those bubbles go. I'm like, and then, and then they just say, okay. I'm like, are you kidding me, right? It took you that long to get okay, right? Like, because you just think, I see the bubbles. I see the bubbles. I know you're about to say something. Okay. And sometimes we get like that with God, right? That, that we're praying and praying and praying, and you see the bubbles. You see the bubbles, you know. And I hear the verses, and I hear all this, and it's, wait. Wait a little longer. And, and as a Christ follower, sometimes we can get impatient with waiting. And, and God saying, just be faithful, continue on. Continue on the journey. And what we need to understand sometimes is this, is that we're always praying, you know, God's will, God's will, God's will. Does God go, want me to go left or right? Sometimes God don't want you to go left or right. He wants you to get, go straight. Just go straight. Keep walking straight down that line. There is no left or right. Quit wondering, oh, is it, is, do I have to go over here? Do I have to go over here? Just, look, if you ain't hearing from God, just keep faithfully going where you're going. Sometimes we get so wigged out about, oh, you know, God, God hasn't, you know, answered my prayer yet. God hasn't done this. Well, keep praying. Just keep praying. Keep praying. So today, uh, whatever that was, I don't know. Romans 5, <laughs> Romans 5, 1 through 5. All right. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we also have obtained our introduction by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we celebrate in hope of the glory of God. Now today, like I said, we're going to talk about hope. So I want your attention, your thoughts to be going towards hope. All right. And he says, and not only this, but we also celebrate... In our tribulations, knowing that our tribulation brings about perseverance, and perseverance, proven character, and proven character, hope. And hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Hope does not disappoint. I've been around long enough to know now there are going to be some disappointments in life. We're not always going to get what we hope for, right? at least in this world. And the way that the world defines hope, yes, we are going to be disappointed, but, but Paul is telling us right here in Romans that there's a certain kind of hope that you're not going to be disappointed with. There's a certain kind of hope that brings an assurance, that brings a confidence because it's based on a certainty, right? We sang that, that song, the, the, the first song we sang in the, in the second set, right? Um, Take you at your word. Y'all remember, I think it was a bumper sticker that said this. God said it. I believe it. That settles it. But, but I think it really should be a little bit said, said differently, right? God said it. That settles it. <laughs> it's, it doesn't matter whether you believe it or not, right? Is that God said it. That settles it. And one day, whether you believe it or not, God's going to show you it was true. And so for us, right, we should take him at his word. That, that the hope that he wants to give us will not disappoint, but you're going to have to sometimes, you're going to have to cling to that hope, right, with your very fingernails. And so this morning, if you want to have a little more hope, let's, let's look at this passage a little more in depth, right? Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have also obtained our introduction by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we celebrate in hope of the glory of God. You see, we do have something to celebrate today, right? Next, next week uh, is the weekend right before, you know, 4th of July. It's going to be celebration of our independence and all these kind of things. We just had this past week, uh, Juneteenth, a celebration again of freedom. And, 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 you know, there's nothing wrong with celebrating. But sometimes we, we're celebrating the wrong things. 
And there's nothing wrong. Again, we should be celebrating Juneteenth. We should be celebrating the 4th of July. But we should also be celebrating every day how Christ has set us free. Right? We should be celebrating that. We, we don't have to wait for a Sunday morning to get excited. We don't have to wait for a sermon to sing a praise. Right? And so we should be celebrating what? In hope of the glory of God. This, this is why we celebrate. It, it's not just because, oh, I feel good today. <laughs> no, we celebrate because we know the glory of God is going to be revealed. And so where does it all start? Well, it all starts with faith. Isn't that interesting? Everything for the Christian goes back to faith. This is why some Christians get discouraged. Because some Christians don't want to live by faith anymore. They want to live by sight. Some Christians want to live by God answering your prayer every time you pray. So you want, you want to have sight. You want to have your prayer answered immediately. And God's like, no, I'm going to, uh, here's the bubbles. Here's some bubbles. Answer's coming later, right? And, and so God's like, no, you're going to practice faith. You're going to practice faith. It all starts with faith. You're not going to be able to get away from faith as a Christ follower. So you might as well be resolved to live by faith. Because every other person in the scripture had to live by faith. Every other person. You're no exception. And so in the Christian's life, in the Christian's life there's always going to be an element of faith. That God's always going to be stretching your faith. God's always going to be saying, hey, trust me with a little bit more. Hey, you know, let's take this step. I don't, you don't know where it's going, but you know what? Trust me. Again, I think it's interesting that his sheep hear his voice. Whereas sheep don't always see his hand. You see, God wants you to have good ears. As I'm getting older, my sight is going. That's why I get frustrated. I got to take my glasses on and off. And so I just got to be content with not really seeing you for a little while. But because I want to see my, my notes. But, but you know... The thing is this, is that as we get older and older, and even in our faith, sometimes we think, oh, I should be seeing more. I should be seeing more. And God's like, no, you just need to be listening more. Just keep your ears attuned. Sheep don't have good sight. They just don't. That's why they get lost often. That's why they need a shepherd. Right? And sometimes we just want to not be sheep anymore. We want to have better sight. And God's like, no, I just want you to have better ears. Just listen. Just draw close. And so this passage begins with faith. And that faith will end in hope. The more faith we, we have, the more we practice our faith, the more our hope will grow. And so what is our hope based upon? Well, it's based upon our faith. Well, then where's your faith based? That's really the question, isn't it? You see, you can't have hope if your faith is based on something that's shaky. If your faith is in a false God or your faith is in something other than God, then I'm telling you, you don't, you're not going to have very strong hope. So you've got to ask yourself that question this morning. Where does your faith rest? Where is your faith this morning? Is your faith in the true and living God? Because if your faith is in Him, then you can have a certain kind of hope that nobody else has. And if you've got faith in the wrong things, our hope will not be steady. Right? We have a firm foundation. That firm foundation is Jesus Christ Himself. And, and He is the rock. Right? He is assured He's been tested and tried. Jesus did not waver, even going to the cross. Our God is steady. And because he has been steady and has always been steady, the ancient of days, right? He's trustworthy. So this morning, your hope can rest in him because he's been tested, tried, and true. But you're going to have to practice faith. You're going to have to extend your faith to Jesus Christ. Not yourself, not someone else. And you're going to have to rest completely in Him. You see, your help develops through the use of your faith. Our word a couple of years ago was stretch. Y'all remember that? Stretch. Right? 
I don't like stretching. <laughs> I just want to get up and go. But you know what I found? The older I get, my, got up, my get up and go got up and went. Right? <laughs> and if I don't stretch, right? If I don't stretch, I'm probably going to be stretched out. Right? And so this morning, why don't we do this? Let's stretch. Right? Go ahead. Wake yourself up. Right? Wake yourself up. Right? Yeah, go ahead, you know. You know, sometimes stretching feels good, doesn't it? Sometimes stretching feels good. But there are other times when, when we don't want to stretch. And, and, and this is what you've got to understand. That your muscles, if you don't use them, you lose them. And faith is just like a muscle. And if you don't stretch it, if you don't use it, if you don't practice it, you're not going to be good at it. Faith is the same way. You don't practice your faith, you're not going to be good at it. You, you want to know why your faith is small or why your faith is weak? Well, when's the last time you really used it? You, you, you want your faith to be bigger? You want your faith to be greater? Well, then try some greater things. Allow God to stretch you in some ways that you don't feel comfortable or allow God to use you in some ways that you're just like, oh, I, you know, I don't know. Douglas Moo said this, hope like a muscle will not be strong if it goes unused. And if faith is what all of us must have, then we should expect God to stretch our faith a little more every day. Even the older you get, when you feel like, oh, you know, it kind of hurts me to move that way. Well, what I'm finding is, is that it might hurt initially a little bit, right? But if you stretch a little bit more every day, you're going to be a little more flexible. Right? Isn't that right, Miss Rose? Right? So y'all come to exercise class, you know, 630. Right? So we got to use these muscles and the muscle of faith especially. We may question, why is this happening? You know, I don't understand why, God, why you're allowing this to happen. Why are these bubbles taking so long for you to respond? God, what, what is going on? Well, let me tell you, God is growing your faith. He's developing your hope. Because, see, here's the thing, is that when, you, when that answered prayer happens, you know what? Doesn't, you don't care how long it took. You're not sitting there saying, oh, my God, you know, that one took a year. No, you're just like, wow, I got an answer. Right? And all of a sudden, it's, I, I don't know, I don't know this from firsthand, but, you know, I understand people, women who have babies go through a lot of pain. Some people, you know, hours of labor. They call it labor for a reason, right, ladies? Right? You're working. You're working. And after hours and hours and hours, you know what? When, you, when that baby is delivered, you're not thinking, wow, you know, that took so No, you're just looking and saying, look at what a miracle, right? <laughs> yeah. Right? So, so sometimes, right, we, we're caught in this moment of to be continued, and we're just thinking, wow, this is just taking so long, so long, so long, until God answers, and then it's like, it doesn't really matter how long it took. Right. Philippians 1, 6, For I am confident in this very thing, that he who began a good work among you will complete it by the day of Christ Jesus. You see, Jesus is doing a work. He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be, right? And he's still working on you. And sometimes, right, we don't like how long it's taking God to do the work. We don't, we don't like some of the tools that he's using to do the work. Right, sometimes, you know, God might use a chisel. Sometimes he's going to use some sandpaper. Sometimes he's going to use another person. Mm, we don't really like that, do we? God is going to use all kinds of things to bring us through faith to a place of hope. 2 Timothy 1.12, for this reason I also suffer these things. Okay, think about that. I'm willing to go through these things. I'm willing to endure these things, Paul says. I'm willing to even be persecuted, put in jail, shipwrecked, beaten over and over again. Why? Because I'm not ashamed because I know whom I have believed. And I am convinced that he is able to protect what I've entrusted to him until that day. My hope is not in 
something. My hope is in someone. And that someone in particular is Jesus. And so, after that long introduction, <laughs> number one, we can have hope because all this is temporary. Because everything that you're going through is one day going to be over. One day, those bubbles, there's going to be a response with the trumpet and the sound of the Lord, right? He's going to descend from heaven. And one day, all of us who are here and remain will be taken up to be with him forever. One day. And so everything that we see, everything that, that you are experiencing right now, it's all fleeting. Solomon says, right, in Ecclesiastes, it's, it's all vanity of vanities. It's all, it's all one day going to be nothing. All the stuff that you're worried about, all the stuff that you're going through right now, it's all temporary, and you've got to remind yourself of that sometimes. This too shall pass. This too will come to an end. This one day is going to be over. And so I have hope, I have a confidence that this is not the end. Praise God. This is not how it all ends. Sometimes, you know, we get those cliffhangers. You watch those shows, right? You've been through that long season. And it gets to the very end, and then they have, you know, this thing like, uh, what y'all remember that show, Dallas? I used to watch that show when I was a kid, right, Dallas? And then you get to the end, and it's like, J.R. gets shot. And you, you're just like, what? Find out. Come back next year. What? You mean I got to wait like five months to find out who shot J.R.? And then they're going to drag it out a whole nother season, you know, to the very end, right? And you got that to be continued. And just like, is this, am I ever going to know? Yes, one day you're going to know. One day you're going to know, and you're going to be known as you know. And so everything is temporary. All this is passing. Sometimes we lose hope because we forget that there's more than just this life. Don't forget that. Don't, don't get caught up in all this stuff that's going on around us because, listen, it's all going to be over one day. And none of it's going to matter. Everything that you're all worked up about sometimes, everything that you think, oh, you know, this is such a big deal. It ain't a big deal. It's really not. Give yourself a little more years and you'll realize it, I was worried about nothing. Everything, everything that you feel so consumed by right now, I'm telling you this, give it, give it a few minutes. And you're going to realize, man, I, I was making a, a mountain out of a molehill, molehill Right? And so, verse 3, and not only this, but we also celebrate. Look at what he says. He, he likes this word celebration. We also celebrate what? In our tribulations. Anybody celebrating their tribulations lately? Probably not. You see, it takes a faith to be able to celebrate in your tribulations. It takes a hope that's assured to be able to celebrate in your tribulations. Knowing, look, how are you going to celebrate in your tribulations? Well, you've got to know that tribulation brings perseverance. Perseverance is going to bring proven character. And proven character is going to get you to hope. So, how, do we, how is he going to say celebrate? Well, look, perception is not reality. Even though everybody wants to convince you, right, that what you're seeing on Instagram, what you're seeing on TikTok, that's how they live every, every second of every day, it's a lie. Ain't nobody living like that. Right? Perception is not reality, but perspective is everything. Perspective is everything. I remember when I was a kid, and I've been back to my neighborhood, you know, several times uh, that, where I grew up, and I remember there was this, uh, my neighbor, <clears throat> we used to cut their grass, and they had a, they had a hill uh, in their front yard, and it, well, there was a big, big slope in their front yard. And I remember when I was younger, you know, probably 11, 12, whatever, and we had, you know, our little lawn mowing business, and uh, it was just one neighbor. And, and um, we, would, we, would, <laughs> we would go over there and say, hey, you know, can we cut your yard? And they'd say, yeah. And, and I just remember looking at that hill, I was like, wow, that thing is so big. Right. And I would just think this is going to take forever. And it really did. It felt like, I mean, it was like, you know, 30 minutes that it took, but it felt like forever. Right. And you're pushing this lawnmower back and forth across a big hill. And I, when I went back and looked at it a few years ago, I was thinking, wow, I thought that thing was huge. It's nothing. It's nothing. Perspective is everything. Sometimes you got to give yourself a little bit of time and you'll see things differently. 
And so our hope is not based on just what we see. Actually, our hope is based on what we can't see. You see, you're looking at one thing and you're saying, wow, that's such a huge mountain. It's such a huge mountain. Well, change your perspective and look at God instead. Because your God is bigger. You're looking at the wrong thing. <laughs> you're looking at the wrong thing. Consider it all joy, James says. Consider it all joy. Here it is, celebration. Why are they talking about celebrating your trials? Because there's something that comes from that that you don't get any other way. Some of you want to be stronger in your faith. Well, then expect some trials. Some of you want to be wiser in your faith. Then expect some trials. Some of you want to be a stronger leader or a stronger parent. Well, expect some trials. It's coming. Because the only way you get it is through trials and tribulations. The only way you get stronger is by what? You go to the gym. Why do you go to the gym? Not to just look good. <laughs> you're going to look ugly in the gym if you're really working out. Because you're going to be sweaty. Your hair's going to be everywhere, right? Those of us who have it. O'Neill ain't got to worry about that, right? Right? And so here's the thing. It's like you go to the gym, but you don't go there to look good. You go there to actually look messy and ugly because you're going to be sweating. You're going to be like all over the place. You'll be grunting. Right? That's not an attractive first look most of the time. Ow! Right? So you don't go there trying to look good. You go there because it's good for you. And if you want to build some muscles, it's probably going to hurt. You're going to be in some pain, not just that day, but give it two days. And on the second day, that's when you're really going to feel it, right? Yeah. Oh, you, you well. <laughs> So what happens, yeah, I mean, the thing is, you, you go and you say, oh, yeah, man, I feel good, right? You're doing all this stuff, you're working out, you know, and then you got to put some weights on there. But, you know, once you put some weights on there and you feel real good about it, and the next day you're like, wow, you know, that was great. I'm going to do it again tomorrow. And then the tomorrow comes and you're like, I can't even move. You can't even move. See, the first day after, your body's in shock. The next day after, you're in shock, Right? How in the world to have so much pain from that? I felt so good. But you see, you get stronger when you go through the tribulations. But you got to break down the muscle to build it back up. And sometimes what happens is this. God is breaking you down. God is breaking you down. You got to wait. Wait. It's a different kind of wait. You see, it's a different kind of wait. And God is saying, I'm going to break you down a little bit here so that you can be stronger. Consider it all joy, my brothers and sisters, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Right? Have you ever said this? Have you ever said this? I don't know if anything else can go wrong. That's the wrong thing to say. Because God's going to show you, oh, yeah, he's got a whole repertoire of stuff that can go wrong, right? He's got a whole list of things he can pull out of the bucket and say, hey, try this, try this. Right? So he says, it's various trials. When you pass one, <laughs> expect another one. Various trials. That the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance, right? It says let endurance. Some of us are fighting it, right? Let endurance have its perfect results so that you may be perfect. And that word perfect really means mature. Right? Incomplete, lacking nothing. Some of us are not very mature when we're going through our trials, are we? Man, it's a pity party. Oh, woe is me. Oh, why can't I have my way? Oh, God! <laughs> right? And we start acting like, you know, immature little babies. And, and it's like, really? How long you been trusting God? How long you been walking with Jesus? And you're going to act like that? Right? It's like God's like, oh, let me just pick you up and put you in the cart again, okay? Just let's, let's, let's go for a ride, right? And, and so God's like, look, I thought you learned how to walk by now. And not only this, we also celebrate in our tribulations, knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance, perseverance, proven character, proven character, and proven character produces hope. You see, one thing leads to another. Character, perseverance, hope, they all come from tribulation. Interesting. That, that it's like you, you don't really, you, you can't leapfrog some of this stuff. 
right? We just kind of want to, uh, I'm just going to skip that. Just gonna, I'm just going to kind of go around. I'm going to circumvent some of this, these trials or these tribulations. No, God's like, no, you're going through. You're going through. It's kind of like the Red Sea, right? It's like, why, why does God lead them to the Red Sea? God, couldn't you have taken them another way? He could have. Couldn't he have just wiped out the Egyptians? He could have. Couldn't he have just like, you know, somehow levitated the whole nation and just lifted them over? Yeah, he could have, but he didn't. He said, instead, you know what? You're going to go through that. And you're going to see the glory of God while you're going through it. They went through on dry ground. That's, that's amazing, right? It's amazing. And I think that that little n- note is there, right? It's dry ground because God was like this. It's, it's, it's muddy usually, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it dry for you so that you can get through it. And so for us, you know, we need to understand God's going to get you through. And so, so quit trying to rush the process. It took a long time to get that whole nation through the Red Sea. And it's going to take a while to get you through some of your Red Seas. So just keep walking. Continue on. We can have hope because the Holy Spirit resides in us, number two. Right? There's only ten. I'm just kidding. We can have hope because the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit resides in us, right? We can have hope because this is temporary. It is fleeting. It's all going to pass. But you can have hope because God has given you a promise. Holy Spirit resides in you. You have a helper. You have a comforter. You have Jesus Christ himself in the person of the Holy Spirit living inside of you. And so hope does not disappoint. Look at this, because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. God knew we were going to need some help. He knows you're going to need some help. And so he gave you his Holy Spirit. That if you will... Allow him to strengthen you. If you will allow him to lead you, he will lead you in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And sometimes that path may even lead through the valley of the shadow of death, but you don't have to fear any evil because he is with you. The Lord is our shepherd and we don't have to want. 2 Corinthians 4, 16 and 17. Look at what it says. Therefore, we do not lose heart. But though our outer person is decaying, yet our inner person is being renewed day by day. For our momentary, see, it's all fleeting, it's all passing, light light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison. That that this passage is telling us that this is a day-by-day thing. Day-by-day, moment-by-moment Something is happening in our lives if we will allow Holy Spirit to do His work. But sometimes we want to put God on hold. See, sometimes we think, oh, you know, it's, it's the bubbles from God. We're just seeing those, those bubbles going on from God. And, and yet God is waiting on our response. Because He's already told us some things that we should be doing. You already know some of the things that God wants you to do in your life. And God's just like, hey, look, you'll get an answer from me when I get an answer from you. And so God's up in heaven and the little bubbles keep coming up. And and God's like, wow, is this person ever going to say yes? Is this person ever going to respond? Is this person ever going to take the initiative and do what I've told them to do? And so sometimes for us, right, we feel like it's all God waiting on us. And God's like, no, I'm actually waiting on you. And, and so he's going to renew us day by day. And sometimes, sometimes the things that you're going to hear, right? You, you feel like, man, I've heard this message before. Wonder why? Because you need to hear it again. Right? Some of you may be saying, oh, yeah, I already saw that. Well, maybe you need to see it again. Because maybe there's something else God wants you to do with it. Right? So that's the thing. It's like sometimes things seem familiar. Sometimes things may feel like, oh yeah, I've heard this before. Well, maybe God wants you to hear it again so you will do something with it. You see, it's all about being renewed day by day by day by day. Did you know that your bodies are renewing themselves? You're like, this is new? (laughs) This don't feel new. Our bodies replace as many uh, as 30 trillion human cells regularly. 
30 trillion cells regularly. That's about, uh, about 330 billion of those cells are replaced every day. I got some disgusting news for you. That dust you see in your house, that's you. <laughs> it's used to be you, <laughs> right? That's your skin cells floating around your house. You say, oh, yeah, I'm over there, and I'm over there, I'm over there, right? You've been hanging out on that, <laughs> on that desk for a while. 1% of your body's cells are replacing themselves continually every day. And so when the Bible says you should be renewing yourself, God means, yeah, you really should be renewing yourself. The skin, the epidermis, sees a fair amount of wear and tear. This is why we have lotions. This is why we take care of our skin, right? These cells rejuvenate every two to four weeks. Your liver, it is replacing itself, the cells, every 150 days to 500 days. You think that's important? Your stomach and intestines, right? Your cells that line your stomach and take care of, you know, you in many ways that you're not aware of are usually replacing themselves every five days. And yet God is saying this, you should renew your man every day, your inner man every day. You need to be renewing your mind. We know this from Scripture, right? Romans 12, renew your mind. When? Every day. Sometimes we need to be renewing our minds every moment, right? That we need to be saturating our minds with the Word of God, that we need to be filling our lives with Holy Spirit. And so we can have hope because God is renewing us every day. Look, I thank God that I'm not the person I was 10 years ago. I thank God I'm, I'm, I'm not the person I was 10 months ago. I'm growing, I'm learning, and I hope you're growing and learning. And God's intention is for you to not just be who you were, but to actually become more like Jesus every day. So that's really a question you got to ask yourself. Am I more like Jesus now than I was last week? Am I more like Jesus than I was a year ago? Would anybody ever see Jesus more clearly in me now than they did before? You see, that's the goal. And so we have hope because, well, Holy Spirit, if he lives inside of you, he is making you new. He is renewing you and your relationship with God every day. And so you will have more hope when you focus on the future to get you through the now. Because let's be honest, sometimes there's a lot of ow in the now, right? There's a lot, sometimes there's going to be some pain in the now. And sometimes it's not always going to feel good to get there. But, but God will get you there, but it's going to be through some tribulations. It's going to be through you persevering, you enduring, you being willing to bear some hardship, you being willing to go through some things because it is worth it. You know, we, we sing that song, that old song, right? It will be worth it all when we get there. But sometimes you're going to have to go through some hard times to get there. And so everything is temporary. He who is in you is greater than he that's in the world. You have the Holy Spirit inside of you. And so you can have hope because all of this one day will be over and it will be worth it all. Our hope doesn't rest in anything that's fleeting. Our hope rests in what Jesus Christ has done. And so as I wrap things up, um, i got this tattoo. Don't freak out, Mom. It's not real. She, uh, back when I got my ears pierced, I was like 30-something years old. And, and uh, I didn't, I, I mean, at 30-something, I'm like, I don't need to ask for permission to do this kind of stuff, you know. And so she didn't, she didn't know, and I didn't you know, see her that often. And so uh, when I showed up at her house and had my ear pierced, she was like, not happy. And so I was sitting down on the couch beside her and she looked in my ear and she, she hit me. And she was like, you hurt me. I was like, you hurt me. And she was like, don't you ever get a tattoo? I was like, yeah, I, you killed me if I got a tattoo. So this is not real. 
Uh, let me make that clear. This is not real. But you might have a tattoo. Some of you may have, had, have tattoos. And, and, you know, to, to wrap up our sermon today, um, I, I, I was like, man, you know, how can, I, how can I drive this point home? And I was like, I really, having a tattoo artist in here would be way too much. That's over the top, you know, <laughs> getting inked up in church, right? Um, but, uh, you know, let's be honest, popularity of tattoos has really grown significantly. You know, a lot of you in this room probably have tattoos and we don't need to know. Okay, uh, yeah, uh, we don't, uh, but, yeah, but, but at least uh, 225 million people worldwide have at least one tattoo. In the United States alone, 30% of adults have a tattoo, and 40% of those aged between 18 and 29 have at least one. Let me give you some other tattoo um, statistics. The longest tattoo session to this day, this was 2021, was 60 hours and 30 minutes. I cannot imagine sitting in a place for 60 hours and 30 minutes to get you know, hit with a needle. Um, I don't like any needle. Tattoo needles can vibrate up to thirty, uh, up to three thousand times a minute. And the oldest person to get a first tattoo was one hundred and four years old. <laughs> so it's not too late. You got time? <laughs> you can even I, and doing some research on this, right? You can even tattoo your eyeballs. Like what in the world? I, I mean, I cannot imagine that, right? But there are people who are doing all kinds of things, you know. The, the most expensive tattoo was, I saw a picture of it. This, this woman had a tattoo on her back, and it was all of diamonds uh, on her back. Uh, and, and they were real diamonds. I don't know how they do all that kind of stuff. But, uh, but what led me to this uh, thought was I had seen something, uh, and I don't know why it was showing up. I think it was on Facebook, and there was something talking about ephemeral tattoos. Y'all know the, what the word ephemeral means, no? So, I, I, yeah, I had to find out myself. Uh, actually, it's a word I learned a long time ago, but you don't use it every day. It means temporary, right? Ephemeral. It means, it means it's going to be there, but it's eventually going to fade away, okay? And, and so they have these ephemeral tattoos now that, um, that you can get, and they last up to about three years, and then they fade away. Um, and so, you know, kids nowadays, you can buy those temporary tattoos. They last, you know, maybe three or four minutes. Uh, or, you know, as soon as they wash their hands or whatever, it's going to come off. But these ephemeral tattoos are made with, you know, real ink. And, and so, but it's, it's a, some kind of ink that somehow dissolves and fades over time. And one of the things that I was thinking about as I was preparing this sermon for, for us all to consider about hope is this, is that sometimes, right, we, we have this hope that's, that's kind of fading, we, we have a hope or we have a desire. We have this, this kind of dream about, you know, what our life is going to be, and it just sort of fades away. And, and today I want us to renew our hope in God. Today I want us to renew our hope in Jesus because, see, the thing about it is this, is we have a soul tattoo. Jesus Christ gave us the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit has been, uh, you know, really impressed upon us. It's not ever going to fade. Never going to go away. We have a down payment in Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit that is never going to fade. And therefore, your hope does not need to fade. And even if you're getting the bubbles and you're thinking, man, this is a long time for me to have to continue on. Well, keep continuing on. Keep keeping on. Keep going because your God is alive. Your God's not dead. Your God is alive. He overcame. And you know what? He overcame in three days. Dot, dot, dot. He overcame. But I'm telling you this. On that first day, those disciples weren't so sure. On the second day, that hope was diminishing. On the third day, on that third dot, what did that, they didn't even believe when the women came back and told him he's risen. Oh, no, we got to go and see for ourselves. And they went and saw, saw that it was true. 1 Peter 1, chapter 3, verse 5. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance, look at this, incorruptible, undefiled, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through the faith, through faith, for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. You have a hope that does not 
fade away. It is not an ephemeral tattoo. It is a tattoo that will last forever. You have been marked by Jesus Christ. You have a living hope because your God is alive. And you can continue on because God continues on forever and ever. Band, why don't you guys come on up? And as we close things out today, I want to remind you that your hope is in Christ. It's not in anything else. Your hope is in Jesus. And He is never going to fade away. He is going to remain forever and ever. So, set your mind on things above, not on things of this earth. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with Him in glory. That is a certainty. That is where our hope is. And today, that is where your hope needs to be. Don't be discouraged. Just keep keeping on. If there's a little bubble going on from God, His answer is coming. You just be faithful. I looked up because I wanted to make sure that three dots don't mean something bad. <laughs> you never know these days. And so I saw that three dots can represent a lot of things. It, it, it can mean mi vida loca. Mi vida loca. Y'all know what that means? My crazy life. Anybody got a crazy life? <laughs> Some of y'all need to yeah, get that tattoo because you've got a crazy life, right? It can mean that. Uh, sometimes people put three dots in a triangle to remind them of Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Sometimes, right, people, people put the three dots to represent maybe their children or, you know, something like that. But today, I'm gonna, I've, got, I've got these pins up here, these Sharpies, because I'm going to invite you to put an ephemeral tattoo that's going to wash away in a day or two. But just to be a reminder that what you're going through right now, it's, it's going to end one day. You just continue on to be faithful. Let these three dots be a reminder that, that you do have Father, Son, and Spirit who's with you. Let these three dots be a reminder to you that, that the answer is coming. You just might have to wait a little longer. Let these three dots remind you that, hey, you know what? God, I'm going to continue to be faithful. And so through the tribulations, through the trials, God, help me to just keep keeping on. And so during this time, I'm going to invite you to come up. As your time to respond to say, God, yes, I commit to continue on. I'm going to keep my faith I'm going to keep my hope. I'm going to keep being true to you. And in a couple days or whenever it washes away, let that be a reminder to you that this too shall pass. But he will remain forever. And if your life is hidden in him, you too will be with him forever. God, we thank you for your love for us. We thank you, God that we can have a soul tattoo through the Holy Spirit who lives within us. And we pray, God, that you would help us to remember that our hope is not based upon anything that we can see. Our hope is based in our faith in the person of Jesus Christ who has given himself freely for us. And today, as we even take these simple three dots God, it's a reminder to us that you kept your word. You had prophesied that you would come. And for years and years and years, people were looking for your return. And one day you did. You were born in a manger. You lived a perfect life. And you died on the cross for us. But you rose three days later, just as you said you would. And because of that, you have kept your word perfectly. And so we have the assurance that he who has never broken a promise, that he who has always been faithful will continue to be faithful. 
And so, Lord, our hope, our assurance rests in knowing that you too will return one day and you will take everyone who believes in you to be with you and dwell with you forever and ever. And it's with this hope that we all say, amen and amen.